Hey Brush Monkeys, welcome back. This week we're starting in on the uh, Displacer Beast from Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures, uh, produced by WizKids. And uh, here's the box art for him. He looks pretty pretty interesting. It's basically a cat with these tentacles sticking out of him. Um, let me zoom in here. Uh, these come pre pre-primed, but the <laughs> thing is, there's also a lot of like really significant flash lines, like you see big one right there along his ribs, and uh, all down his leg here and here and here. So, Jesus, there's a big one right there. Most of the time, they tend to get these things pretty nice, but this one, this one for some reason is just horrific with the flash lines. So I'm going to have to go in and do a lot of cleaning up on them, well, which means I'm going to have to reprime them, which is bad. Now, the only thing I've done to him so far is I've glued him onto this bigger base. Um, he originally didn't... I don't think he came with a disc base. He might have, but... He didn't fit on any of the other bases I've got, so I gave him this big disc base. And uh, then I heated up these tentacles with a heat gun, just very carefully. Just blowing it on there very carefully. And then bent the tentacles, because originally the tentacles were like stacked on top of each other like that, you know. And uh, I didn't like how that worked, so I heated them up very gently, bent them down, and then ran, held it in place while I ran the whole thing under cold water. So it it reset in this new position. And I think that's much more dynamic pose, and I think it's going to make painting it a lot easier too, because I'll be able to get in all those little, I'll be able to cover the entire tentacle and get in all those little spaces. So yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and clean this guy up, and then. Uh, prime them black because uh, the box art has them as kind of a bluish black and of course not knowing much about Displacer Beasts because I don't play D&D I got my trusty 5th edition monster manual so I'm going to look this guy up and see what he's supposed to look like uh, bear with me 59 even though this isn't the current edition, it can help in uh, researching some about the creatures that you're painting. That's what it looks like in the Monster Manual. And that one, kind of crackhead skinny cat. It shows it kind of purple, but it says uh, Displacer Beast has luxurious blue-black fur. Uh, so, yeah, and that's how I'm going to paint them. I'm going to prime them black and then probably paint them with uh, Nightmare Blue. Or excuse me, Nightmare Black, which is a very, very dark blue. And then uh, we'll go from there. See what, uh, see how we need to highlight this guy to get him to, to get those muscles to pop. Because he does have really nicely sculpted muscles on him. And I really kind of want those to stand out from the black. So, alright, so for right now I'm going to go ahead and pause. And then I'm going to clean this guy up. And then we'll go from there. Alright, see you soon. All right, brush monkeys. Um, normally, I prime these miniatures and then I come back and give you an update, and then I do the base coat on them, um, and then I come back and give you an update. Uh, but because of the nature of this creature, because it's mostly this blue-black color, um, and because I was doing everything with an airbrush, I just went ahead and base coated it uh, right after I primed it. So you can see he's now this kind of dark bluish-black color he looks a lot lighter on the camera than he does in real life but um, that nightmare black really looks good on him so I've got eyes teeth claws base um, whatever these little things on the end of his tentacles are to paint um, I might do another highlight I kind of want to take the the nightmare black and lighten it up just a little bit and do a highlight on those muscles um, just to make them really pop, or maybe do a shade wash on them to bring that color down a little bit. I don't know. But he's looking really good so far. Um, like I said, I just went ahead and primed him black, and then I painted him with the airbrush. And so he came out looking like that. Uh, with the Nightmare Black uh, thinned down a little bit with the X28 thinner. So uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a break and read up on these guys. I'm not sure how I'm going to base him yet. Uh, because I don't know what their environment looks like. So I'm going to read up on Displacer Beasts and what their environment looks like and all this kind of thing. And then uh, I'll come back and and uh, finish up the base coats on this guy. 
and we'll go from there okay so I'm gonna shut this off and go learn something see you soon Bit. all right brush monkeys I'm back and um, having done a little bit of research on these guys and looked up some pictures online I have chosen the palette for them I'm going to go with uh, for the highlights on his skin because he I mean, he looks pretty good, but I want to do a couple little highlights on those muscles just to really make them pop. I'm going to do a mix of the Reaper Master Series Nightmare Black, which he was based in, and Vallejo Game Color Imperial Blue, which is a nice darker blue color. Then I've got um, Lich Purple. It's an old uh, Citadel, uh, kind of a darkish purple for the... Um, for the insides of his ears and these pads on his tentacles here with all the little claws on there and then ivory for the little teeth themselves his teeth and his the claws on his paws um i've got uh vallejo matte white and then the old citadel emerald green for his eyes, because I was, I read that their eyes glow really bright green. And then I've got uh, Mechanicus, Mechanicus Standard Gray and Dawnstone for this rock he's on. Then for the base, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to try and experiment here. Um, I, I wanted to do kind of an arid, rocky base on him to see, to, to kind of make the, the darker body pop out against the lighter backdrop. But um, having read that they live in temperate, climates um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and coat all around this rock that he's on in luster and undergrowth and then instead of just dry brushing it or dry brushing it with a uh, niblet green or um, uh, shade washing it with Agrax earth shade and then dry brushing it niblet green I'm going to try uh, coating it with a layer of uh, Dark Angel's green contrast paint over the luster and undergrowth and then dry brush with niblet green when that dries and I think that's going to make a much more vibrant green um, to kind of stand out against so uh, we'll see how that works <laughs> uh, I've never tried it before I've never tried contrast over texture paint before um, I've tried it over the gray pumice but that was relying on it being primered with the rest of it and I, unfortunately I didn't read up what kind of climate this thing lived in before I started painting it so now that he's already base coated it's a little too late to go back and and uh, put down the pumice and primer it all around here because the back spray will get on to what I've already done so moving on um, anyway I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get started on those colors and uh, I'll come back when I've made some progress, all right? I'll see you guys soon. Bye. All right, brush monkeys, I'm back, and I finished all the base coats on this guy. Um, painted his base screen, painted his little rock there. Painted his, you can see I painted the tentacle pads. Had a lot more claws on it than the uh, illustrations I've seen led me to believe. So I kind of painted the pads themselves kind of a purple and then sort of dry washed or dry brushed white over the top of them and not quite white but that kind of ivory color bear with me I just noticed a couple of spots I missed here just kind of picked out the little claws on the edge and dry brushed in the rest of it And then um, I got his claws on his feet. I got his, which look kind of bright, but I'm going to shade wash the rock with null oil, or not null oil, uh, with Agrax Earth Shade. And I'm, that'll catch those claws in it too, and that'll tone them down a little bit. Um, got his teeth and his eyes and the insides of his ears done, and he looks really, he looks really, really mean. I really like how he came out. Um, this base is kind of causing me a little bit of consternation because, and this is why I don't like using the WizKids base because they're straight up and down bases and they're also a little, um, 
a little differently sized than the Citadel bases, so I had to move them to a large handle, but th there's not enough of a lip there for the for the handle to get a hold of, so I'm in constant fear of this thing popping off of here and messing it up. But, uh, yeah, you can see right there how vicious this old guy is. So I think those teeth and the ears and the eyes sticking out of that dark blue blue black skin really gonna look good I think he really I think he's really coming along nicely for as quick a paint job as he is he's really looking good fast um, I'm gonna shade wash the rock with Agrax Earthshade and then give it a dry brush of Dawnstone and then I'm gonna put the texture paint on the green parts of the base uh, as soon as they're dry you can see there's still a little bit of wet spots there so I'm gonna take a break and let that let that dry and then I'll come back and uh, Actually, I'll probably go ahead and shade wash the, the rock and then take a break and let it all dry. And then we'll come back and texture the base. So, he's coming along pretty well. Um, I will be back soon. See you soon. Bye. Alright, brush monkeys. I've got the, uh, the stone is all um, shade washed, been shade washed. And I uh, went ahead and textured the base. There's still a couple little places where the texture paint is still a little bit wet, so I'm going to let that sit for a little bit. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and dry brush the stone and then uh, paint the contrast paint over the texture. And then uh, when we come back, we'll see how that looks. All right. Just want to give a quick little update. That's where we're at right now. It's looking pretty good. All right. Again, see. <laughs> That's just a quick update, uh, and I'll uh, see you soon. Bye. Alright, Brush Monkey, so I've got the texture paint um, painted with the contrast paint. That's the Dark Angel's Green on there. And I've got the... I took it off the handle to paint the rim of it. And uh, I can't really put it on a... Um, can't really stick it on a cork because there's nothing for the cork to grab onto on the underside of that. So, kind of have to just make do with it off the cork um while that's drying i wanted to take a second and talk about these whiz kids bases because these things are horrible <laughs> the whiz kids miniatures look fantastic they got a lot of detail on them and they paint up really nicely but the bases are just for somebody who's used to g-dubs bases um these things are just really horrible they're flat they're like way thinner than the gw bases for one thing and they've got just this little rim on the bottom nothing on top there's no texture to them at all so they're i mean even the gw bases have a little bit of texture to them there's nothing there at all so it's kind of uh it's kind of slick and you kind of have to rough it up a little bit yourself but worst of all i don't know if you can see this or not on here but there is no bevel to this edge at all there it's like straight up and down and it's not enough for the gw bases to grip onto so what you want to do is take one of these heavy-duty um, nail files. Uh, it's all this is. It's just uh, I know it's got a weird pattern on there, but it's just a heavy-duty nail file that I picked up at like CVS Pharmacy. And just go around the whole thing and put an edge on it. See if I can do this without the camera shaking too badly. The nail file is really aggressive, and the plastic base is made out of is not terribly hard so it doesn't take very long you can do just one or two passes around the outside of the whole thing just like that brush off the dust and you've got enough of a, a bevel on there like I said you don't have to go really hard or go for a really long time brush it off, clean it up, and you've got enough of a bevel there for this GW handle to grip onto here. Let me get that in there. Come on. There we go. And without that, without that bevel on there, it'll come right off, but you can tell, put enough of a bevel on there and it'll stay in there pretty good. You've got to pull really hard to get that thing to pop out of there now. But I would, I would strongly recommend doing that. Just pick one of these nail files up at CVS or Walgreens. They're like 
three or four dollars for a pack of two or three of them and just put a quick bevel on all these bases before you use them it'll save you a lot of heartache later <laughs> down the line um, and it'll make it a lot easier to work with these Citadel handles these things really are fantastic for painting miniatures it's just that that little lip is going to need to be sooner or later you need to to take it off of there and paint it anyway because where the handle grips onto it is not going to be covered by the paint. So, um, so yeah, there's there's that. Just go ahead and bevel the edges of your WizKids bases <laughs> or rebase them onto a, a GW base. I didn't have GW bases big enough for for this guy, um, so I had to to make do with the WizKids base. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let this dry, and um, once it's finished, I'm going to dry brush it with the Niblet Green and then glue some tufts on. I've got my rocks from the uh, Citadel 40K basing kit, just to put a couple little more rocks around here, because, you know, if you've got a big rock, you're going to have smaller rocks around it. You're not just going to have a big rock by itself and a bunch of grass. And then I've got these uh, Army Painter swamp tufts it says swamp tuff but they're they're just kind of a bright green and and looks a little better for this for what's going to end up being the basing for this thing so uh yeah so i'm gonna let that dry and then i'll come back and hit it with the niblet green and glue some stuff on and then i think it'll be just about done so next time you see this guy he's gonna be finished so i will see you soon bye and there he is, Brush Monkey's the finished displacer beast. The rocks and tufts all glued onto his base. He looks pretty fantastic. I'm pretty happy with how this one came out. So that is the displacer beast from the Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures line from WizKids. I am pretty happy with him. So I'm going to call him done, and we will call it a day on this video. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next week. All right. Bye. Hey Brush Monkeys, Tom from Flying Monkey Studios here. If you like what you see, click like down below. Uh, click the subscribe button if you want to see more and want to be notified when new videos come out, um, check out the links in the video description for links to our Patreon page and our Instagram so you can see all the different ways that you can support me in doing what I do and uh, get your hands on some of these miniatures that I've painted if you want one of your own. Um, you can also uh, follow us on Twitter and Facebook if you want to see updates and see when uh, new videos get posted. Um, and uh, I will see you guys next week. Thanks a lot. Bye.